How a Romance Novel Saved the Galaxy by Ariana de Rilte. Chapter 70. Tholme 2. Tholme was using the downtime during his hyperspace jumps to read The Mandalorian's Dilemma. When he finished it, he sent a note about his encounter with a Mandalorian and their child the month before. If this book was as popular as the temple made it seem, his meeting with the Mandalorian was likely a result of it. Tara told him about Quinlan's misadventure in Little Gildame in return, as if Thalme hadn't heard all about it in messages from his Padawan. He idly wondered if Quinlan would have the Lothal property memorized by the time he night. In the meantime, his mission was growing more complicated by the day. He was investigating child abductions from multiple planets near Gazir along the Perlemian trade route. The mission briefing said that raiders were attacking small villages on semi-out-of-the-way planets, looting the villages, killing all the adults, and making off with any children. Salme's immediate assumption was that they were taking the children to sell into slavery. It was an unfortunate fact that children were always wanted in the slave trade, and it was also a fact that the Perlemian route connected with several routes into hut space, particularly the one through Bunta, these raids had been happening on various scattered planets along the route for nearly two years now, but only recently had neighboring planets compared notes and realized it was an organized group targeting remote villages. This led to them requesting Republican Jedi help. Another non-shadow Jedi had done the groundwork on the abductions, talking to local government and visiting some of the sites of the raids, while Thulme disguised himself as a junk dealer and started trying to find the children. He'd visited the latest raid site on Nelgapok, finding the damp ruins of a burnt-out village. He'd salvaged some goods to sell from the outskirts to give an excuse for being there. The other Jedi had reported they couldn't find any survivors from the raids. Thalma had to wonder if the raiders had heightened senses or tech to scan for body heat to be so thorough in their killing and abductions that there wasn't a single eyewitness after two years. His only lead was the imprints of the raider's ship's landing gear in the semi-dried mud of the planet, which had thankfully held its shape until he arrived. He had a hollow of the imprint, but it wasn't a ship he was familiar enough with to recognize their landing imprint. It was a dead end unless he could find someone who recognized it. And so he had decided to travel to the furthest planet to suffer the raids, Centaurus, it was the last planet along the Perlimian route before you hit the outer rim proper and also where other routes branched off towards hot space. The more inhabited parts of the planet had a thriving underworld, though it tended more towards the spice trade last time Thalme had checked. It had now been several days, and while Thalme had discovered a number of unsavory practices on the planet, which he was mostly forced to ignore due to his cover, there had been no sign of any raiders or groups bringing in children for sale. Of course, there hadn't been reports of any raids in that time either. The raids happened only once a month, and the last had been three weeks before. There was a very high chance Thalma had missed them, and he hated to think his only options were to wait for another raid. The intel from the Mando on Coruscant had let the Jedi take down a slave ring. Thalma couldn't help but wonder if he could find another helpful Mandalorian, preferably a bounty hunter who was used to tracking people down via their ships. The book had revealed that all he'd have to do is tell them he was searching for missing children, and any Mandalorian would jump at the chance. Probably even more so if he revealed he was a Jedi. Though Thalma would hold that idea in reserve since it might break his cover. So he wandered the cantinas looking for a likely target. He found a Mandalorian watching a pod race on one of the big screens in a more sports-oriented cantina. Their armor was green and brown, though it was also heavily covered in scratches and bents. Not your breast scar, he'd wager. One hand was resting unconsciously on their blaster, while the rest of the cantina gave them some space. Thalme was pretending to be a junk dealer, so he couldn't be too suave in approaching the Mando. He decided to go for greedy and a touch oblivious in his single-minded pursuit of profit with a secret heart of gold once pressed. Hey, Mando! Are you a freaking bounty hunter? Thalme had a good Karelian accent, if he did say so. He pretended to not notice the rather intimidating blank stare the Mandalorian helmet leveled his way before returning their attention to the screen. The rest of the cantina ignored them. No one could question a Karelian having the gall to bother a Mandalorian who wanted to be let alone. Cause I got a small job for you, but it can wait till after the race. The Mandalorian paused, 
then gave a small nod so Thalma settled in. He even ordered two drinks and sent one of the Mandalorian's way. The race finished quickly. The Mandalorian got up without looking at him, but headed towards one of the private rooms that lined one side of the cantina. Once the door swung shut behind them, it was relatively quiet. What's the job? They asked in a low and surprisingly melodic voice. My name's Michael. I'm a junk dealer, you see. I keep getting to my score and discover, and some franken ship has already been there and picked them clean. All I have is the imprint they leave in the mud. I'll pay you to identify. Maybe help track them down. The Mando hid his side but removed their helmet. They had long, dark brown hair done up in intricate braids around their head and a beautiful tan, if scarred, face. They were also visibly exhausted and gaunt. Aguila, she, her. Twenty creds for the ID. We can negotiate the rest once I know who it is. I'm hungry. I'm gonna order some food. You want some? No charge. Thalme found himself asking. He should be negotiating her down since the idea wasn't worth that much, but she was radiating weariness into the force. She looked quizzically at him. I could eat. He ordered some meat and vegetable filled pastries, then pulled up the image on his pad. Aquila turned it a few different ways, then froze. She ignored when a droid came and dropped off their pastries. Where did you see this? Was it Galadron? She demanded. Galadron was further along the Perlimian route, but Thalme hadn't heard any reports of raids out there. Only knew was that there had been Jedi there recently who had passed through Centaurus on their way home. Centaurus's underworld had found it entertaining that they had been dragging the corrupt governor of Galadron along with them. It wasn't every day that someone got caught owning a Lundurin face mask and faced a million credit fine. No, I've never been out by Galadron. This is further forward. Thalme didn't want to name the planet in case it made them a target again. Now Kapok was a pastoral planet filled with nerf herders and little else. It barely had a government and wouldn't have been able to defend against the raiders even if they had known they were there. The Mandalorian leaned back, hand creeping towards her blaster. Subconsciously, Thalme figured since there was no intent to draw it. She was studying him, him quite hard before she came to a decision. Well, junk dealer, I've got a deal for you. You tell me what planet you saw the ship imprint on, and I'll help you track them down for a much reduced price. You see, he edged, time to bring in the heart of gold. The people on that planet have already suffered from losing their children. I don't want to bring more trouble to them. She sat up straight. They killed children, Thalme shook his head. Not killed, abducted. Probably to sell them as slaves. See, I was thinking that maybe if I could find the ship, I could figure out where the children were sold. Then I could tell their people and maybe get some good prices for the info. You could see the hit of sexual interest as she looked him over. And if they didn't have any crits to pay you, you'd do it anyway, wouldn't you? To save the kids. Her tone was knowing. She had his fake persona pegged. Hey now, no need to be insulting. Aquila chuckled and reached over to grab one of the pastries, biting it with hungrily. She swallowed before saying, I just finished a job where all the credits I earned went right back to the kids of the target. They didn't deserve that scum of a boar. Like knows like. Thalme slumped into his seat. Just don't go spreading it around. This is my livelihood, you know. She hummed around her food, then took the time to finish the rest of the page straight. Once done, she said, You're going to tell me what planet you saw that imprint on because they're in danger. That's the landing imprint of a Mandalorian gunship. The only people using them are the true Mandalorians and Death Watch. So unless you were on Galadron recently, that is a Death Watch ship. Thalme froze, his mind at overdrive. He reached for the force and it rang with confirmation. Sith house! He said, running a hand over his face. His mission just got a hell of a lot more complicated. He knew about the mission on Mandalore to rescue abducted children from Death Watch, though he was too far on the rim to know any details. This has been happening for two years, he said wearily. A cold expression changed from amusement at his curse to confusion. You just lost your Karelian accent. And what do you mean by two years? There really was no use in maintaining his cover. He'd need Aquila's help and would have to break this wide to the council once he confirmed. I'm a Jedi who went undercover to discover why children had been going missing from several planets along the Perlimian route for the past two years. If Death Watch are involved, that means they've been a hell of a lot more active than either yours or my people know. 
a Jedi? Her interest in him rose considerably in the forest. That explains the Kepha children. What's your real name? Master Thal, would you be willing to help me investigate where Death Watch are taking the children? Once I tell the order about this, I'm sure they'll authorize the funds to pay you. She smiled a self-depreciating smile. I do it for no creds to help Ade, but it helps to keep the ship running. What are you thinking? I'm thinking that they had to refuel somewhere if they were going all the way back to Mandalore. Also, that their next raid is in a week. They're moving on Death Watch on Concordia any moment now from what I hear, she said. The problem might already be solved, Thomasuga said. The force is telling me I still need to investigate. Maybe Concordia isn't their only base? She looked as horrified as he felt at the idea. I'm sworn to House Ren, which is neutral, so we're not supposed to do this, but we need to tell the Mandalore. I'll send the information through the Council and the Jedi on Mandalore. That way you won't have to offend House Ren, Thalma offered. She eyed him. If you're pretending to be a junk dealer, you can't be running a fast ship. I have a Class 2 hyperdrive on mine. Class 4, Thalma admitted. Let me get my things and contact the Council, then we can me off. She smiled at him, and he returned it. He wouldn't mind taking her up on the close quarters. It would at least be some comfort while they plunged into what was sure to be a complicated and frustrating mission, one which he was going to have to explain to Quinlan. A safe spit. Well, now that he knew the mission didn't involve slavery, it might be safe to have Quinlan join him, especially with his newfound fascination for Van Lawrence. He eyed Aquila. How do you feel about my Padawan joining us at some point? He's fourteen and a handful, he warned, those heads beating around the bush when talking about Quinlan. She grinned. Sounds like every Mandalorian teenager. I'd be happy to meet your aunt. She hid in the nearest unlocked ship all on her own while I talked with those still in the cages. Cages whose locks I melted through with my lightsaber. The moment I cut through the second lock, though, the hangar went dark and there were strange forms moving in that darkness that the light of my lightsaber couldn't illuminate. The force told me I must run, but I tried to take precious suckers to get some more slaves onto the unlocked ship, since mine was far away. I got one being onto the ship, but they weren't alive when I came back to check after getting out of there. The nano computer only had two options, Melator 5 and Mandalore, so I said the autopilot. I sabotaged the ship once we hit the atmosphere and did a controlled crash into the desert. In other words, you have no idea why they try to kill you and Gary. I could speculate that they think I saw or learned something more than they did, but all I can say is that the dark side was strong in that entire system.